Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 16. We are in Real Housewives of Potomac Hell. I thought the finale was three episodes ago, <laughs> but apparently we got three more. Yes. Listen here. There is something that goes on with this show. This show is so polarizing is that we all can watch the same thing and basically see different things. It's crazy. You get what I'm saying? It makes for interesting conversation. I'll it really, that. it really mm-hmm. don't though. Oh, okay. It doesn't make for good conversation <laughs> okay. because it got people over here talking that they saw one thing that wasn't there and you got people that want to acknowledge things that is there. So it really doesn't make for good conversation, but we go do our best. Okay. You ready? Yes. Let's go. Well, Candace and Winnie go to Kiana's med spa to yep. get some laser treatment done. Candace decides to get her lady part done. Okay, Candace. And Wendy decides to get her underarms done. Have you ever got a wax before? Um, I've had wax, but not laser. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm scared to get wax, like on the armpit. I heard it hurts. It's like a quick sting. Like, it would be fine. But what? It, I think it's only quick if they get it off at one swipe, right? Yeah, and they usually do. Oh, okay. I'm about to say, yeah. if they don't leave it there, the, pap- okay. the paper's now part of me, okay? <laughs> okay. The paper's now part of me. Well, Candace tries to talk to Wendy while she's getting her laser done mm-hmm. because she says it's a little bit painful. So, Wendy is going to film the pilot for her talk show next month, but she's having problems finding guests. People that she's connected to are either in L.A. that she would have to fly in or the people here in Maryland would need to, well, they have contracts to where they have non-competes, so they wouldn't be able to show up on her platform. We don't have non-competes. Wendy, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Get your boy and your girl on there, okay? Go ahead. Candace uh, tells Kiana that she's proud of how she handles herself mm-hmm. when it came to the girls on the trip. Mm-hmm. Kiana was actually shocked that no one checked on her, and then Giselle was the first one to check on her. Mm. Wendy's tries to say to her that we were very concerned like i don't want you to think that we weren't thinking about you but then we see a flash of wendy in the dr talking about she didn't want to share rooms with kiana what did i think of that i thought that was really fake and i thought it was strange like why didn't you want to share a room with kiana i mean okay <laughs> <laughs> but you want to sit about you so concerned about the girl but she's sick it sounds like somebody should be in the room just to check on her, make sure she she's good. But maybe they maybe they didn't want to share a room with her because she's sick. Possibly, I needed to see more context. But seeing that flash, I was just like, why you don't want to share a room with your friend? It looked nasty. Okay, here, here, here's here's my opinion. Um, if I was to give one, I don't even think they are really friends. Possibly, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think they're friendly. Um, the same way as her name is Kiana. Yeah. Um, the same way as Giselle knows of her too. You get what I'm saying? In the same capacity. Yeah, yeah. So I think they all know each other in the same capacity, but it is sold to us as if like they are like closer, closer. Um, because if they are closer, closer, this is where I'm about to take the bell away from Wendy. Wendy, come on now, mm. stop it. You get what I'm saying? Some would say throughout the seasons of Potomac, you do have this kind of like phoniness to you. You get what I'm saying? And this would be one of the examples of a friend of yours that quote unquote is your friend you didn't check on them more you let the ops check on them first Mm. you get what i'm saying so yeah well kiana moves the conversation along and says that she can see that candace really does have love for robin Mm. candace thinks that robin is throwing gasoline on a fire that they're trying to extinguish by using words like defamation Mm. apparently candace is privy to some deform defamatory things that robin has said Mm -hmm. she's not going to put you know put it out there but she says when you start the dog whistle she's going to be ready to come at you candace get over it Get over it. Mm-hmm. This is the longest breakup I've ever seen on TV. Mm. Obviously, Kiana can see right here in the little interactions y'all had that, hey, you have love for Robin. You love Robin. Robin's over you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? What you did on Twitter, you wanted to appease the people on Twitter instead of actually your castmates. You went in on Robin because you knew it, it was going to get you fans. It was going to put you in favor of Twitter. Mm. But it did not put you in favor of Robin, right. the ones you have to interact with. So y'all not friends. So you know what people do when all of a sudden they don't want to get back together or they're not friends? You're like, hey, listen here. Don't let me put out information that I know about you. Mm. It's like, yo, you, you scoring now. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And I think, Candace, you really need to get over it because this is Candace again taking us away from the main plot of this season. What have the season or what does the season supposed to be about, Blair? Juan. Juan. (laughs) (laughs) 
this this was supposed to be the get back season that we did not get last season with Robin and Juan being the main attraction. She wanted to she wanted to take us back to the S A thing with Chris or the alleged S A thing that like she's saying about Chris and things like that. We over that. You already read Giselle at the reunion. Get over it. Let this be the main plot of Juan and Robin. Now in this in this episode, we we all up in Robin's house. I don't even see Juan nowhere. Yeah, I don't even know if Juan lived there anymore. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. What What did you think about what Candace quote unquote threatened? Um, about about their relationship with Robin and things of that. Well, nature. first of all, she's talking about she's throwing gasoline on something we're trying to extinguish. Who's trying to extinguish it? Mm. Robin doesn't care. She tried to talk to you. Mm -hmm. You weren't able to be talked to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's done with the situation. Yeah. I don't know what you want more from Robin other than her to forgive you or to move past it. But she's not willing to do that. So now what are you talking about? Her saying defamatory and you know things and da 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 and da da. Yeah. It's just like. Just leave it alone. She's Robin's done with it. Why are you still mad? Listen here. She said, but I think it's because Candace feels that Robin's still mad. And honestly, she could be. She could not be. But Robin might just be like, I just can't fool with you. Because I don't, think, I don't even think Robin can't really think, mad. I don't think she's that mad either. I think mm. she's just like, I'm just not going to fool with her. Mm -hmm. Because she claims to be my friend, but she goes online and says cash stuff about me and my relationship. Mm -hmm. And I can see where Robin's coming from. You know? So, hey. Hey. It is what it is. Giselle is taking Grace to the airport. Hello, Giselle. Um, where she's actually going to fly down there with her, get her settled, and then come back home mm -hmm. uh, for college. We see flashbacks of Grace and how she's grown up throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Both Grace and Giselle are wiping away tears in the car on their way to the airport. And um, that is that scene. Yeah. A lot a lot of people that I read, um, they really felt the feels about this this package that Bravo put together for Giselle to put her in a good light with her being a good mother there for Grace, seeing her grow up and things like that. I wish I would have started the show from the beginning so I could have the same emotional attachment to I did um, and I didn't. Um okay, thank you, Blair. Yeah. Um to her taking her kid away to college. I don't know, maybe once I have a kid I can relate. Mm -hmm. I feel like me taking my kid to college is going to be one of the happiest days of my life. <laughs> you know, I'm paying basically $12,000 to $20,000 a semester for them to be gone. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, it it was good to see um, and things of that nature. Hopefully, Grace is doing good in school and hopefully, you know, Giselle is over it now. I guess for me, I didn't feel any way towards it because Giselle has always been a good mom. That was never in question. Yeah. So for me to see more of storyline when it comes to her daughter, taking her daughter to school, all this type of stuff, I'm just like, yeah, she's great with her kids. Mm. I want to see something else. Okay. <laughs> been true. here, done that. I get the girls going to college. We can do a nice, cute send off. Yeah. But Giselle, when are you actually going to give something else? But... We're, this is what we're getting, and that's fine. You know, cool. Listen, it, it, listen mm -hmm. it, since we're going to stray away from the main plot, you guess what? We might as well just throw anything out there now. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we're not getting what we want anyway. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. Right. Well, Sharice and Ashley go over to Robin's house. Stop right here for a second. Sharice, right? Based on what you know on this episode, do you think Sharice should be a main character of Real Housewives of Potomac? No. You don't think so? No. Really? Yeah. I find her to be entertaining a little bit. You don't think so? I can do without her. Oh, okay. That's true. Maybe if we got rid of I, I, Giselle. Why we got so you want so you rather switch them out and not have them both in there together? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Cause I feel like Sharice, although she can be, I feel like, a villain, she doesn't seem to be super divisive. Oh, see, look, you actually unlock a I wasn't thinking about Because she's a villain to Karen. And people are gonna you know, but feel the way about that. We we will touch on that. Okay. You actually opened up an idea in my head, but we go touch on that after we get to the scene and things like that. Okay. Well, Sharice is going to throw a crab boil at mm -hmm. her house and she plans on inviting Jacqueline. Okay, Jacqueline. She asks about inviting Candace and Robin says, Well, that's your friend. Like mm -hmm. You ain't got to make no special exemptions for me. Like, do what you want. That's your friend. Yeah. Sharice doesn't have an issue with Karen, but Karen has an issue with her. Yes. But she's going to invite Karen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That's it. Okay. I uh, know. I'm saying go ahead. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> well, NECA is getting ready, and it is uh, the last week of um, the her on the IUI, I believe it's. Yes, IUI. Okay. And they are going to have an appointment where they count her follicles. And then by the end of the week, if everything looks good, then she and her husband can move forward with the insemination process. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I heard anything in real time about her being pregnant and things like that. 
So um, hopefully whatever options that she has, she says she have all these resources to use them. Hopefully things work out for her and her family and things like that. There's really nothing that we can really, as much as we've seen them, we on episode 3000 with Real Housewives of Potomac. I still don't know much about NECA. Yeah. Besides her, quote unquote, with the shrine thing with Wendy, that when she does show her personal life, I'm like, oh, yeah, she is trying to have a baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wish um, we would see more of NECA. I think a lot of people are over NECA with one season in already with her. Yeah. That, they, that they're that not going to give her a second season to, quote, unquote, learn about her. But I wish she would have used um, her time more to let us learn about herself mm -hmm. than to beef with Wendy. You get what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I because agree. now, because now this storyline, which I think should be a main storyline that you probably could have won some people over with the fans, with women fertility and things of that nature. You kind of hit this with like, a, Oh yeah, I'm trying to have a baby too. It's like, like yeah, this, that's how it feels. This, this should have been the main thing. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But we don't really know much about NECA. But, hey, best wishes to you and your family. And when, also, when she's in the group, she just kind of fades to the background. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I mean, maybe because she's the new girl, she doesn't have, like, much to say, mm -hmm. much input. And I agree, like, you don't come in guns a-blazing. But she kind of did come in guns a-blazing exactly, at Wendy. Exactly. But to be on the side of the other women to where she's, like, the lowest on the totem pole. So. And, that, and, mm -hmm. that, and that's what you're known for. Right. We don't know much about you, but... You know, best wishes to you and your family, though. Well, Karen is baking cookies. Yeah. Giselle visits, and they talk about how she dropped Grace off at college. Mm -hmm. Karen pours up a drink for them. They go sit and chat, and Giselle invites Karen to Sharice's event. Um, and apparently, Sharice invited Jacqueline, too. Mm -hmm. Karen said, Ray Ray got uh, allergy to crabs, mm. so she ain't going to be able to go. But then we see a flashback of Karen and Ray shucking and jiving into the crab boil Listen, <laughs> at the last trip they went to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is funny, but Karen, come up with any excuse. I don't care. Now stop. You right don't. Here. You don't want to go. Whatever. Now this. Now I'm about to connect the dots of why I think your theory may not work. Right. Okay. It is very evident, as Sharice said it, that Sharice said I don't have no problem with Karen. Wait, obviously every time y'all get together, y'all start flipping tables. We saw a flashback of the scenes with Karen standing up. They look like look. Karen got active. Yes. Right. Karen, quote unquote, can. Go one on one with Giselle, but as you can see, they could come together and film. Right. Right. If you was to put Sharice and Karen together, you just gonna have another version of Giselle and Candace. I really feel like because Karen is, I don't think Karen gonna talk to her. I think Karen's mature enough that if Sharice was full time on the show, she would find a way to be cordial with her. I really feel like because Sharice is not a main cast member she kind of and they don't get along mm -hmm. then she's like this girl is trying to use me for a come up i'm not giving her nothing but sharice lives in potomac though but i'm saying for coming up on the show like getting I, back I on the show I, i'm just saying like ever since it came out that a lot of them don't live in potomac i'm like we need more people that live in potomac at least so yeah. i i think listen here ashley i got nothing against you i think we could take ashley out and put sharice in I just want to break up that Giselle Robin situation. Mm. It's, it's tired to me. You think so? Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Well, Robin um, goes over to Sharice the yeah. day of the crab boil. This was funny. And helping her get the tables ready. Wendy and Karen aren't coming. Mm -hmm. Candace arrives and Robin was about to go down to the stairs to let her in. And she was like, oh, let me turn around. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> Giselle comes in. Candace walks right past her to get a drink. Yeah. Jacqueline arrives and she's talking to um, Giselle when uh, when Gis Giselle's talking to Jacqueline. She's mm -hmm. saying like, you know, Mia said y'all were good. How y'all doing? Mm -hmm. And Jacqueline was like, that was two months ago. Like, we are not good. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. Um, then Kiana, Ashley, and Neca arrive. Mm -hmm. Neca arrives with the Grand Dame sash and crown, okay. which honestly fell pretty flat, in my opinion. You think so? Yeah. I thought I thought you liked it watching it in real time. Mm. You was like, oh, that's funny. Yeah, I guess maybe it was a little bit funny, but I kind of felt like it felt fat. I mean, because that we weren't even focused on that for long. It was literally a second. I mean, but it, she wore it the whole day. I mean, it wasn't supposed <laughs> to be a. I mean, I guess. Look, I, I don't know. My thing is, um, when Candace showed up and Robin was about to go downstairs, and she saw it through the little window on the side, she's like, "Oh no, 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 no!" Listen here, funny. Yeah. Funny. Listen, I'm I'm with it. I'm like, listen, matter of fact, that's not even my house. <laughs> exactly. I ain't got to get the door for nobody. I ain't got to get the door for nobody. <laughs> Obviously, I think she knew that. I think she twisted the door and realized that it was a lock. She let herself in. Yeah. But it just lets you know the awkwardness of Candace and Robin. It's like two. 
It's like one person within a relationship. It's like this. I have one person saying, we broke up. That's Candace saying, we broke up. We're not friends no more. I want to work on our relationship. I want to work on our friendship, right? Mm -hmm. We saw the scene or things of that nature with her saying earlier in the episode, listen here, if if, if Robin want a dog whistle, I got things that I can expose and things like that. And, you know, basically putting out empty threats in my opinion, right? My whole point is, I think Candace really thought they was like close mm. and really like friends, friends. And I honestly don't think like Robin may have been friendly, mm -hmm. but I think like Candace built it up more in her head than what it actually was to the point where she really can't get over it. And not only that, but I feel like she feels a way because of Robin's relationship with Giselle. Mm. And she's just like, how can you be friends with somebody so heinous and nasty? You know? Yes. And I think that plays a role into Candace's uh, aggression and, mm -hmm. and um, feelings, you know? Yeah. It's, it's it just, it's just very hard to watch. Like, I'm just like, please get over this little high school breakup thing. Y'all got going on in this season. Man. Yeah. Well, Jacqueline is sitting down talking about how she doesn't plan on any, uh, holding any anger or like evilness towards Mia. Mm -hmm. Then Mia walks in and she, she says hi to Jacqueline. It mm -hmm. wasn't no get your gotcha moment that mm -hmm. I feel like they were trying to set up for Mia. And she and ja Jacqueline actually sit down, have a conversation and they're able to pinpoint the issue they have, which is basically, you know, the situation that happened to Mia where mm -hmm. she was essayed and um Jacqueline wasn't there for her yeah Jacqueline mm -hmm. wasn't there for her like me it was like we kept it a secret and Jacqueline said honestly I didn't know until two two years later mm. like I I wasn't not talking about it I didn't know about it yeah and they say that they're going to move on and try to do better as a friend and friends. listen here mm -hmm. if th if the rumors are true about the seating chart this mm -hmm. is how Mia earned her first seat mm. because th this is the whole point of it yeah why would I, if, if it was a gotcha moment, mm -hmm. right? Let's say production did set up like a, we're going to set up Mia, yeah. right? It would not benefit Mia to ignore mm -hmm. Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Or not talk to her. Exactly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if it was a gotcha moment, Mia did the right thing to acknowledge and to confront and to give the production the scene that they quote unquote put together yes. for them to have. Mm -hmm. And that's how Mia earned her seat and earn her spot next season if this show returns. I mean, I think Mia, she's came in and she's wrecked shop in the best of ways. Listen, like, I really feel like she's solidifying her spot in the that's show. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, this is completely different. Because Mia wasn't there for the whole time. as, as was well, like she there for the whole time, like with Robin and Candace and things like that. Was she there for that? Yeah, she was there. She was there for mm -hmm. the whole the whole seven, eight seasons, whatever. My whole point. Wait, no. What do you ask me? I'm talking for what? How, when did Mia de debut on Potomac? Like I think the fourth, no, the fifth or sixth season. Okay, so she yeah. was, so she wasn't there for the whole time. No, no, no. Mm -mm. So how, so she's not even an OG of the show. Mm -hmm. And Candace, Robin, Giselle, and all them who are y'all are the OGs of the show and things of that nature. And y'all can't basically do what this girl is doing. True. Mm -hmm. Come on now, and then y'all over here acting like you know, like I did what I was supposed to do. This Robin over here. I don't know what you wanted me to do. Like no, you 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 do your part. Yeah. <laughs> show your life. You know what I mean? You get paid the big bucks for us to get a little peek into your life and things of that nature. And Mia, she earned herself. She earned her money this season. I have nothing bad about. I have nothing bad to say about Mia this season, unless next episode show me something crazy. You well, I have one thought that popped to my head about Robin. Okay. Um. Do you think that possibly Robin and Juan? didn't really give us anything this season is because they don't give anything in their everyday life. Basically, if there's issues, they just kind of ignore it. Yeah. yeah. Or they just don't talk about it. Yeah. They oh. don't address it. And I'm thinking that maybe it's not so much that, <coughs> excuse me, it's not so much that Robin doesn't want to get into it, mm -hmm. but this is how she and, and Juan handle conflict is what I'm thinking. This is how Juan and Robin. You yeah. Said? I mean, yes. I mean, that could play a big part. But once you sign up to be, quote unquote, a person on the show, you can't. There's something to and, and I don't want to say acting. But because, giving the people what they want. Because I way. don't want to say acting because I don't want to say it's fake. Mm -hmm. But the whole point of you being a cast member on the show is to, quote unquote, not do your regular everyday thing. You get what I'm saying? You like it's not normal for cameras to come into our house and film us and things of that nature. So you're already not in a normal situation. So if the cameras are there 
and you kind of know what's going on, you got to kind of do abnormal things for your position on the show. And one thing is talk about your problems. Yeah. If you are the type of marriage that don't talk about your problems, that's that's cool when there's no cameras around. Mm-hmm. But when there's a camera around, we got to talk about it now because mm-hmm. they paying me a lot of money. Mm-hmm. to basically talk about my problems yeah so, and for us to have like a genuine emotional moment about our situation yes but it made me think about that because there was like a scene back in the day when robin was trying to talk to juan about you know if they would want to get pregnant again mm-hmm. like would he cheat on her like kind of the way he did with like her first couple of pregnancies mm-hmm. and juan literally got in the car and drove away <laughs> so I'm like I think Robin is like I'm not going to say scared to press one but I think she knows she's not going to get she much out of him she probably knows her husband yeah she knows her husband yeah. she's like yeah no it ain't going to happen right but anyway so Robin is talking about the crabs how they're yeah. under season there's no butter they ain't got no obey mm. uh, NECA says the cocktails were hitting though okay NECA and I'll say I do love my crabs with obey and butter okay thank you Blair yes Cherie says that she noticed Candace and Robin weren't speaking. And this is why I say give Cherie a permanent seat on the show. Mm. She was hoping during the DR trip that there would be a bridge that they mm-hmm. could connect back to each other. Mm-hmm. Candace said that she was privy to info that gave her pause. Mm. Apparently, Robin shared Candace's text messages to a blogger, essentially to make Candace look crazy is what Candace said. Mm. Robin said that she did it to explain why they were no longer friends. Uh Sharice is saying that Robin cared for Candace, but Candace allowed social media to take precedence over a real relationship. What did, what did you think about that? Um, honestly with the text message situation, I would understand if we were friends or even were really close friends at one point, mm-hmm. and then you would be like, why would you send our private messages to anybody? But I think because so much was playing out in the media, the, all of the things that Candace was saying about Robin, um, I think Robin had to come with something to show why she's not messing with Candace. And mm-hmm. her proof was in these text messages mm-hmm. that I don't think we even really saw. I don't even know if it came out. Yeah. Here's my thing. This is why I say give Sharice a chair. Mm-hmm. Give her a, a flute or, 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 or like whatever y'all say about the show. Because she actually spoke to what, quote unquote, what the real people are saying on Twitter, on X. Yes. Not that's not the Candace stands, not the Robin stands, not the Giselle haters, not the Giselle lovers and things like that. She spoke to the actual factual of, hey, what's up with y'all? Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? We got away from the main thing, y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The main thing is not supposed to be Candace and Robert's relationship. And Candace, let me address you for a second, right? What is this information that, quote unquote, now you want to bring to the table? You want to bring to everybody saying, you know what? You're a hypocrite, uh, Robin, because you gave a blogger uh, information about me. Was this a problem when you tried to reconcile with, with Robin mm-hmm. episodes ago? Right. Why is it a problem now? Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? My whole point is, even with the information that you have, you, quote unquote, still wanted to reconcile with Robin in that scene where y'all were sitting down and you walked out crying because Robin was like, I don't want to reconcile. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So now that Robin don't want to reconcile, it's known that Robin don't want to be your friend. It's known Robin don't want nothing to do with you. It's known that Robin want to forget you and not really talk to you, basically give you the Giselle treatment. Now, all of a sudden, you like, you know what you did to me? You gave my private text messages to a blogger. Like, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that. Because then on top of that, I don't know what came first. Did you, quote unquote, uh, went online to all these other podcasts and all these other YouTube shows and things like that on Twitter, Trash and Robin? And all of a sudden, people want to know, hey, why are you and Candace not friends? Is it cool and things like that? And apparently, based on what happened, uh, watch what happened live or something like that. Mm hmm. Robin was like, look, it was a mutual friend that all of us knew and things like that. They asked the question. I just told them the answer. Yeah. It wasn't nothing like a secret thing. So I think Candace was trying to catch Robin in an aha moment. She was uh, trying to grasp for straws, trying to basically make a point when there really wasn't one. If you just listen to what Robin was saying about, listen, I just told him why we're not friends. But then they got to yelling. Yeah. And when they get the yelling, Sharice get the banging. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's basically what happened. Yeah, Sharice gets the banging on the table, yeah. trying to get everybody to shut up. Mm-hmm. She says that it's effed up and this is enough. She's tired of it. Mm-hmm. Giselle says, I think she's drunk. 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Giselle. Gave us her little part of the episode. Yes. Candace goes to the kitchen to cry. Yeah, of course. And Candace apologizes for yelling at Sharice's home. I think it was her kids that was sitting there, which is like her adult children. Mm-hmm. And sh- she's trying to apologize to Sharice. Sharice just walks straight to the back of the house. She got a woosa. Because she needs a minute. Yeah. Um, but we get the triangle. Candace is really tearing up. Mm-hmm. I think Kiarna and Neka go to check on Candace. And my only thing with Candace is that. I feel like you're f- trying to find reasons to be mad at Robin when you're not mad at Robin. Mm. You're hurt by Robin. Mm. You you were sitting up there in the spa talking about she want to call defamation. I'm going to get into her. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, then do it. But you don't want to. Mm. You want to be sad because you want her to be your friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not really how you feel. You want to be mad that she sent these text messages that you found out about. But when she says, oh, F and well, <laughs> now you want to cry. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, what What do you want from Robin? I guess she really wants to be her friend. But Candace, she doesn't want to be your friend. No. She doesn't want to be your friend. She don't. Let's move on. Look, also, let me get into Robin just a little bit. Robin. And, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Cut. <laughs> Cut me off. Go ahead. <laughs> One more thing, which I've said before, is that I don't fault Candace for going online and expressing how she feels about the things that Robin has done or what she speculates Robin to have done. I do. Um, I don't. Because, I mean, that's really how you feel. If you feel like she was doing that in an effort to get at your husband, and I do think the things that Giselle said was really messed up, mm-hmm. um, then fine. But don't come on this season being weird, trying to be in her good graces when you drag this lady. Y'all, clearly, if you're talking about her like that, that cannot be your friend. Mm. It can't. So, yes, I'm done. Go ahead. Okay. I, I blame it because uh, I do fall her for it because as much as I know how serious even allege type of essay or like whatever, um, or, or even that type of harassment, mm-hmm. right? We did not, we saw the scenes. We did, no one believed that Chris did it. Right. So my thing is for you to keep reminding us of this failed attempt of Giselle. That's, that's the thing that gets me upset is that it was a failed attempt. Mm-hmm. It's one thing if we saw it and then like it was like an aha moment to where we really don't know what happened until the end or till the reunion. We watched the whole season last year and we watched how it was a failed attempt on Giselle. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So my thing is, my problem with Robin is that Robin, you don't have the pull or the alleged pull that Giselle have. The anchors of this show is Karen and Giselle. Y'all may not like it, but it's the truth, right? Karen can be like, I don't want to talk to Sharice. I ain't going to the crab bowl. I ain't going to be in that scene. Mm. You know what I mean? Because she's an anchor. You know what I'm saying? Giselle can be like, I don't want to talk to Candace. I don't want anything to do with Candace. You know why? Because she's an anchor. Robin, you are not an anchor. So for you to say, I don't want nothing to do with her. I don't want no interactions with Candace. I don't want nothing to do. You can't. Don't do not do that. Because mm-hmm. guess what? We can do without you next season. Mm-hmm. Because you didn't give us what we wanted this season. So my thing is, outside of the Juan story of what we wanted to know, based on the behind the scenes that she put behind the paywall, we didn't get this season. So what do we expect from Robin next season, Blair? Even less. <laughs> <laughs> so my thing is, truth be told, outside of being Giselle's friend, what is your call to fame on this show? Right. And for you to be like, well, I don't have a call to fame and I'm going to interact with basically one third of the cast. Well, we don't need you. Right. <laughs> like, like, or sitting up fighting Giselle's battles because Giselle don't talk to half the cast. So like my thing is Giselle could do that because she because she's an anchor with Karen. But you're you're Giselle friend. And guess what? You can be demoted yeah. to friend of Giselle. You get what I'm saying? So that's what that's the thing I didn't like about Robin saying, I don't want to talk to Candace. We don't got to talk ever again. I'm like, Candace, it's your job to talk to your castmates. Mm-hmm. Like, Robin, it's your job to talk to your castmates. And guess what? Giselle, it's your job to talk to your castmates as well. And that's why every episode, you have all these people on here, which are right. Because I believe if you put yourself above the show, and the show is taking a hit and taking a, a, a plunge to the downfall, mm-hmm. because Giselle don't want to talk to nobody or bring people together, then we got to get rid of Giselle too. Yeah. So, I mean, like, Robin, don't do that, man. And I and I just want to say that I agree with Robin in the sense of if you think I did all these horrible, terrible things, why you want to be friends with me? And you expressed all that. Mm-hmm. Why do you want to be friends with somebody that you think is so awful? Why? I, I love you. And Candace can't even answer the question to that. Like, and I'm and I'm so confused. Why Candace is confused? Mm-hmm. I guess we will all be confused. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, Jacqueline, um, they asked how the conversation with her and Mia went, and she said that there was positive movement in mm-hmm. that conversation. Yeah. And that's where we end. 
listen here, Candace got up and left. She, she, you know, once she was crying and everything, she did apologize eventually to the kids. She apologized to Sharice. She said bye to everybody, and she said bye to everyone, and then she said under her breath to those who matter. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? What did you think overall of this episode? Um... Uh, you ready for the season to be over? Yeah, I'm ready for a reunion um, and just see if we can hash anything out because things aren't getting hashed out during the season. Yeah. And I feel like we are like on a hamster wheel like or like Groundhog Day, just like reliving the yeah. same issues mm-hmm. and having the same conversations and just coming to a dead end because people cannot get past their emotions. So I'm, I'm ready to see if Andy can help people see the light so we can move this this conversation forward. Yeah, I know I've given out pink slips and um as if my pink slips matter um i do i i do see a middle ground when it comes to this cast i think andy should put all of them on probation Mm. and he says listen here because if things are only getting hashed out at reunions Mm -hmm. reunions is at most what three parts maybe two parts yeah so you're telling me i'm paying y'all for 20 episodes for people to quote unquote tune in for only two, mm. and that's the reunions. No, everybody will be called into my office and be like, "Look in here." Everyone collaborated into what happened this season. Yeah. So as a collaboration, I'm gonna put it like this: I'm not going. If I fire one person, I'm firing everybody. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Total cash shakeup. Yes, because mm-hmm. I'm like, if because my thing is, as much as we want it, we just can't get rid of Giselle and just move on. Even though, like, it may happen. I'm not Andy. My name is Christopher. You get what I'm saying? We just can get rid of... It's like everybody contributed in their own way to the downfall or the basically groundhog day of the Real Housewives of Potomac. So I would call everybody in and be like, hey, listen here. Everybody else is guaranteed. Everybody's guaranteed next season. If y'all don't give me... If I feel like that we don't come to no resolve within the episodes, I'm giving y'all 20 episodes. Yeah. I'm giving y'all 20 episodes to do what y'all want and basically come to some conflict resolve. That's what a season's supposed to be. It's supposed to be conflict resolve, conflict resolve, conflict resolve, conflict resolve, conflict at the end of the season, resolve at the reunion, and rinse and repeat. Exactly. That's how it's supposed to be. But yeah. it just been conflict, 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 conflict. And it seemed like we're not going to get to a resolve until the reunion. I'm like, we just waste, wasted 20 episodes of conflict. Yeah. And, 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 and it makes no sense. It's a waste of money, really, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And I think that what actually gives a satisfying season or even moments is when people take accountability. Like, okay. I wish I had my sign up from the other show when I said the word of the day is accountability. Mm-hmm. When people take accountability and they're actually able to see their faults in a situation, that's how people can actually move forward. Even if they aren't friends or they don't necessarily forgive each other, yeah. but them just being able to say, I did this and I can see how it could hurt you and you know, what's done is done, yeah. but we're going to move forward and keep on taping the show in so many words. Yeah. So yeah, I think what this show was lacking is accountability as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And based on what happened on, on um, watch what happened live with Andy after that, I think uh, Robin was on there with Claudia Jordan. I think her name is Claudia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, she kind of gave us a heads up, but what's the reunion going to be? She said, who did the most reading and things like that? Candace did the most reading because that's her role. Like always. And who reads fell flat doing the thing? They said Wendy's because that's her role. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They said, who did uh, Candace read the most? They said Giselle because, of course. You know, it, it, I'm just like, what do you even have to read Giselle about this season? Giselle hasn't even spoken to you. Like, at this wa- point, it's Candace just like. Candace want to take us back. Uh. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> my, thing, my thing is like, truth be told. The f- if I was there, I would be like, what did Giselle even say to you this season for you to read her about this season? There's nothing. You want to take us back. Yeah. Hey, lack of accountability. Anything else? That's all I got. Y'all be good. Bye.